Let's break it all down. We just told you what we thought in the last segment. Now it's time to talk to ESPN's Trevor Maddich on a Maddich Monday. Hi, Trev. How you doing, man? Well, good morning. I'm doing great, except not. Yeah, it was a tough Saturday. BYU did not compete uh, hardly at all against TCU. What did you see and what stuck out from Saturday's loss? Well, it, it starts with this. TCU uh, came to play. TCU has outstanding players. They're a lot better than people think, even though they lost a lot of guys from last year's run to the national championship game. They did a good job of replacing those guys in the transfer portal. So this was a, a, a serious, legitimate team. So we start there. And then BYU started really slow. And on top of that, BYU was depleted in the secondary especially. So I think in some ways we need to, at this point, stop and make sure that we give them some grace. Because when you look, for example, at the, the safety position, I mean, they, they came into the season depleted at safety because of preseason injuries. And then they had more injuries and more and more. And in this game, they played about half a game with a converted wide receiver. And TCU took advantage of that. I mean, take a look at take a look at the, the Rose Bowl from two years ago, Utah against Ohio State. And, and Utah had so many injuries at corner that they had a running back line up at corner. And Jackson Smith and Jigba, Buckeyes receiver, had over 300 receiving yards that game. Well, th there comes a time when it actually does matter when you have so many guys hurt at the same position. And all those things sort of added up to a perfect storm for BYU against TCU. Trevor, is BYU in trouble here, or do you think Saturday was just a, a bad day? Well, I think there's a little bit of both in there. Saturday was a bad day. But when you look at the, you know, the, the rest of the season as it unfolds, the way for BYU to win games, and again, right now, for fans, the first goal here is to get to six, and they've got four right now wins. The, the way for them to get it is to play more cleanly with fewer mistakes and better execution than the opponent because they're going to face a lot of opponents that have that have just more depth of talent than BYU does at this point because of recruiting. Uh, they've been recruiting in the Big 12 for decades. BYU now is, is getting started in that and then injuries for BYU. So, so that's how they need to be competitive, right? And right now they're not playing as cleanly as they need to play, as they can play. Because all we can ask of them is to maximize their capacity, to maximize their potential. And right now, I don't think they're they're near there. Previous to Saturday's game, if BYU was winning the turnover margin, they were winning the game. This was not the case. This was an even margin. Obviously, the pick six to start on the opening possession does not help. But BYU was outmanned and outgunned. So moving forward, is there a game where BYU f you feel like BYU – uh, we'll continue to uh, compete. We hope Saturday, right? But at Texas and against Oklahoma, you hope for competition at least, right? Yeah, Saturday is, is big because Texas Tech is coming to town. And whereas TCU was working on their backup quarterback because of injury, it looks like Texas Tech is coming in with their third string quarterback. Yeah. So it looks like BYU should have a big advantage at that position. We'll, we'll see how things shake out. But remember that this Texas Tech team took Oregon to the limit earlier in the season. And Oregon is a legitimate top six or seven team. I mean, Oregon is, is fantastic. Texas Tech stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. And so this will be a tough one. And then as you look through the rest of the schedule, uh, especially on defense, the teams that they're facing are really strong. I mean, we know about Oklahoma and Texas's offenses. But from a defensive standpoint, Iowa State, is third in the Big 12 in terms of yards allowed. Iowa State is is second in, or excuse me, points allowed. They're second, and West Virginia is fourth in the Big 12 in terms of yards allowed. So you're, you're looking at team Texas Tech, by the way, is fifth in sacks in the Big 12. So you're talking about future opponents that rate really well statistically in terms of not just their offense, but their defense. And so this is a very important game. I wouldn't necessarily call it a must win for BYU to get to six, but it's a very important game for that quest. Trevor Maddich with us on BYU Sports Nation. Keaton Slovis had a tough day on Saturday. He was the first to admit it on our postgame show uh, afterwards. Uh, if you are the offensive coordinator for Saturday night against Texas Tech, what are you doing on the first two possessions to get Slovis in a groove to where He's comfortable, and then everyone else follows suit. I am scheming to get guys open. 
I mean, as I as I do breakdowns on uh, some of the best teams in the country for Sports Center and uh, College Football Live and things like that on ESPN, I, I'm I'm taking deep dives into what these guys are doing. One that I did last week on Washington's offense uh, showed how creative they are at the short passing game. Arizona did the best job of anybody at slowing Washington down. They did it by backing everybody out. So they took away that deep pass. And then it wasn't just throwing check downs and bubble screens that Washington did. They had, for example, screens. They had a whole bunch of different kinds of screens that would hit different points of attack. They used different combinations of blockers. One of them, they didn't even throw the screen. They got to it with a jet sweep, but it amounted to a screen all kinds of different creative ways to, to spring guys and get them into a position where they have an advantage at the point of attack. I did the same thing with Oregon's offense and, and showed a couple of plays where uh, from their pick menu. In other words, they have all kinds of, of picks. These are legal if you do it correctly. And one of them was crossing routes where they had two guys crossing to set the pick. It was man coverage, so there were two defenders there. And all four of those guys made a wall about three yards deep that the receiver, intended receiver, was able to rub his guy off on. It was fantastic. Another Oregon pick wasn't on crossing routes. It was vertical. It was a vertical pick where they had guys running down the sideline, setting a pick down the field. It was fantastic. It was creative. It schemed to get individual guys open, and it was executed at a high level. These are the kinds of things that BYU's offense needs to do in order to maximize the potential that they have. Regarding the run game, and you addressed certain elements of what BYU could do in that, and the lone touchdown was a jet sweep to Keelan Marion from three yards out. BYU is second uh, worst in the country in rush, rush yards per game, 67.5. That would be fine if they were throwing for 300 a game. They are not at the moment. And then if you throw out total per game because teams uh, rush a different amount every game, BYU is last in yards per carry. We're six games in, Trevor. BYU has shown us what they are. At what point do you uh, abandon f sort of preseason philosophy regarding the run game and go a different direction to try and open up the offense in some way? Well, the run game kind of is what it is at this point. But you can't not run. You have to continue to do something to make the defense respect it. Part of the reason is that play action pass has to work. And so th there's got to be some modicum of, of a run threat. I think that being creative there is important too. BYU uh, has some athletic guys that you can use in pulls and things like that. But they need to figure out what those linemen can do best and then call run plays to make those kinds of things happen. But really, it's the passing game that's going to have to carry the team. And this is where execution comes in. I mean, on the pick six uh, the, that started the game against TCU, as I looked at that, I saw, you know, it was multiple shallow crosses. And I saw... Isaac Rex line up on the right as a wide receiver and come across on a shallow cross. And there was another receiver on the, on the other side, on the, on the, on the left. Rex was on the right coming to the left receiver lined up on the left, went up field. And if he came right across right behind Rex, he would have picked off Rex's guy. Rex would have been wide open on that play. Instead, the receiver on the left kind of bent it up field a little bit so that he wasn't in position for a pick. Now maybe he was coached to do that, but you know, I, 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 he, they missed an opportunity there. But then it was man coverage. And when the ball came his way, the receiver on the left found that his defender was right in front of him. And instead of ducking in front of that defender, cutting him off so that the receiver's body was between the ball and the defender, the receiver just stopped. You don't stop on a crossing route on man coverage. You stop on zone coverage. When you sit between the zones, when you get to the other side of the field, it's man coverage, you keep running. And you can't allow that defender to be in front of you when the ball comes. And so this, I'm not saying that that play is why they lost the game. And it turned into a pick six because the receiver wasn't where the quarterback thought the ball was going to be when he threw it under pressure. I'm not saying that that play lost the game. What I'm saying is that the execution is a real head scratcher because if he was coached to do those things, I've got to wonder why. And if he, he was coached to do it the way I described it, which is what most teams do, then why didn't he do it that way? And how can he be coached to do it better the next time? This is where BYU needs to improve. Precise execution on creative plays. And so when you talk about the running game, I don't think you're going to do a lot to improve the running game. But there is a lot of improvement in terms of creativity and especially execution available to them in the passing game.
And the next challenge is Texas Tech Saturday night on homecoming at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Trevor, we appreciate the keen insight and honesty always. Have a great week, man. Thanks, guys.